Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. There was a wardrobe change. I was always wearing a t-shirt, so you know. Um, but I was sweating. <laughs> and so if, if this is irreverent, I pray that you would pray for me and that my sin would be forgiven. Um, but I think this is better for everyone if I'm a little more breathable. So let's hop back in where we were. Empowered by the Spirit. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to start telling you to fall down and be healed? I'm going to get my sweater back on and slap you with it? No. None of those things is what we're talking about. There is power from the Spirit. And Paul outlines that. But I want us to look and see what that power is actually for and how we live our lives. So let's take a look, shall we? Paul says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit and your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So the first time we see power here, it's used to strengthen us in our inner being to faith. So the Holy Spirit has a power to give you more faith. Any of you ever dealt with an issue of not having enough faith? Just me and a bunch of liars today? Okay, cool. That's fine. We'll make this work. <laughs> you see, faith is this hard concept. Well, maybe it's not hard. We make it hard. And all faith really is, is believing that God is going to do what God said God is going to do. Now, here's the issue. Sometimes, some people, not us, but some people, will believe that God is going to do something that God didn't say God was going to do. And when that doesn't happen, they lose faith. For instance, people who pray for millions of dollars, no point does God say he's going to do that. So if you're believing for that and God doesn't do it, it's not really on God, it's more on you. Or in the person who taught you that. There's other ways too. There are ways in which we, we have faith for things that are more us than God. Well, God, if you want me to have this car, then let me be approved for the credit report. Well, God, I was approved, so this must be your will. You know, the credit people are getting a little crazy right now, right? If you're alive, you can probably get a car right now. But we, we attribute these things to God. Oh, God, you, you clearly said it. Or God, if you don't want me to go to work today, don't wake me up in the morning. <laughs> Praise be to God. He wanted me to have a personal day. See, we attribute these things to God. And then sometimes, those are funny things, but when the things we attribute to God... Like God said this, when they don't happen, then we get angry. We get upset. We walk away and say, you know what? I'm tired of that. God's not who he says he was. Truth be told, he's not who we say he was. The Holy Spirit's power in our lives can give us more faith. Here's how it works. In scripture, Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You will never be left alone. That's a scriptural promise that God has made for us. So in that time when we could feel lonely, the Holy Spirit comes and lets us feel the presence of God. Wow, I'm not alone. That's how the Holy Spirit builds faith within us. That's power from the Holy Spirit. But wait, there's more. There's more in the scripture. Let's take a look. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love, meaning that those who have known Christ and who have put their faith in Christ, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So for those of us who know God, the Holy Spirit helps us know the depths of Jesus' love. 
the depths of Jesus' love. If there's one prayer that I could pray for you individually, knowing that some in this room have cancer, I'm, I see your prayer concerns. Knowing that some in this room want nothing more but to have a relationship with the child they don't have a relationship with. Knowing all the ways in which you pray. If I could pray one thing for you, it's that you would know the depths of Jesus' love in your life. That's the one prayer that I would pray for you. It's the one prayer I hope you pray for me. It's the prayer that I pray over my children. That they would know the depths of Jesus' love in their life. And be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Because in scripture, there is no greater miracle. There's no greater miracle in scripture than a person who's been fully transformed by knowing the depths of Jesus' love in their life. Could you imagine that for a second? Could you imagine if you were filled in your life to the measure of the fullness of God? Would your life look the same? What would a life like that look like? We have a couple. We have Peter and, and John and Paul, Timothy. These people who now we read about in Scripture that understood the depth of Jesus' love in their life. That understood beyond all knowledge. It's not just what you can know. It's not just reading about all the love. Because the Pharisees, the time of Jesus, they had read the entirety of Scripture. They memorized large portions of it. They knew it. But this is knowing love that goes beyond understanding. Imagine that for a second. Think about how smart you are. And loving and knowing Jesus beyond that point. This is intuitive. It's instinctual. It's solely experienced. That's the depth of Jesus' love in our lives. We have things that we do instinctually. When my daughter Chloe and I are walking, I walk like, hi, buddy. I walk like anybody else does, right? I'm just walking. And Chloe's walking next to me. What do you think she does? She grabs my hand. It's my daughter. I'm her father. Without even thinking about it, she has not put thought into, I should grab dad's hand. It's just a, because in this, there's safety, there's love, there's comfort. I know that when I have dad's hand, that even if I'm not paying attention, he's not going to let me walk out in front of anybody. I know that if I'm here, I'm safe. It's just naturally who she is. It's naturally our relationship. That's the kind of relationship Jesus wants to have with you. Where you understand the love of Christ so deeply. that you instinctually just reach up and grab your father's hand. It's beyond head knowledge. It's beyond reasoning it out in your mind. And it's beyond anything you could possibly imagine. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. There's one more mention of power in the scripture. It says this, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. Think about that for a second. I play this game with my dad, right? My dad bets the lottery every single week. He is convinced at some point he's going to... Whenever I'm talking to my dad and we're having just a conversation on the phone, we'll get to this topic. They're like, yeah, you know, if I, if I hit the lottery this Sunday, this is what we're going to do. He has a plan. We're going to travel the world. My dad hates planes. 
but we're going to travel the world. I'm like, you realize this, this system's not going to work, right? You're going to get to one edge of the country and decide, well, I guess we're done. Um, and I'm going to give this much to you, this much to your sister and your grand, and the kids. With my, Elena and Chloe are going to have this and this and this. My dad can imagine a lot. More than we can imagine or ask for. What would you ask God for? If the, the father came right now. <laughs> oh, I feel like that's what God would sound like when he showed up, right? Oh. Like, all right, give it to me. What do you want? I bet a lot of us can figure some stuff out really quickly. Some of us are like, I'm glad you're here. Let me go through. And we'll be able to go through that list pretty quickly. Now to him who is able to do a measure more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power, that is what? That is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and the Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit is always first at work in us. The greatest miracle God can do is to transform you. You are not supposed to be the same as you were before you met Jesus. You're supposed to change. I'm supposed to change. We're supposed to be transformed. You're not supposed to talk about the other stuff. You know what? I'm going to do this. This on. Does that work? There we go. Because it keeps dropping off, and I want you to hear this, right? I want you to get it. So often, when we want to see God work in our lives, it's never in us. It's, it's never in us. Lord, help those people. Lord, help them. God, if you could just change that person's life, if you could just break their chains of addiction, if you could just change how they view our family, if you could just change how this person acts at work, if you can just change literally anybody else but me, God, my life would be so much better. The power of the Holy Spirit always, always first works within us. If you're looking for something outside, before you have a transformation inside, you're going to get frustrated. But you're in good company because God's also frustrated with you. We're supposed to change. We're supposed to be transformed. The Holy Spirit works within us. When we have faith, we know the depths of Jesus' love. That's what, that's what the Holy Spirit wants us to do, right? It wants us to have faith. wants us to know the depth of Jesus' love in our lives. And then we get to dwell with God. We get to go back to Genesis, back to where we're walking with the Father in the garden, back to when we're sharing our entire life with God. That happens. That dwelling with God happens through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to have a spirit-filled life. To have a relationship with God that is so yielded to him that he comes to us and dwells with us in intimacy and in power so we can experience in life all the things that Jesus promised the Holy Spirit would do for us. This only comes through the transformation that happens within us. We have to be changed. And yeah, there is, there's amazing power from the Spirit to affect the world. We can be a church that people come and get healed. I don't know how to pastor that kind of church. We'll figure it out. But we can be that kind of church. We can be a church that people prophesy. We can be a church where people are leading and teaching, evangelizing, living out the gospel that has mercy we can be the kind of church that does all the things the early church does but we cannot get there 
until you and I begin the work of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives for faith. Because it's not an easy road to be that kind of church. It, it's not supposed to be. Instead, Jesus tells us it's going to be hard. People are going to forsake us. We're not going to be welcome in a lot of circles. People are going to think we're weird. And we will be weird through the power of the Holy Spirit. And you, the body of Christ, you have those gifts. Scripture says that the body of Christ has been equipped with all the gifts that the Spirit sends so that we can do the mission of the church. So which one of y'all's prophecy? Which one of you is healing? Who's supposed to be the one that's going to teach? Who's the one that preaches the gospel? I'll give you a hint. That's not all me. We can't get there until we recognize that we are the body of Christ, that we all have giftedness, that the power of the Holy Spirit speaks into our life, and that we have to humble ourselves before God and seek after the Spirit. So do you want power? Not economical, political, or hierarchical power, but the power of the Holy Spirit. If you don't want it, don't ask for it. It's that simple. If, you, if you're sitting here thinking, man, this guy's weird. I thought this was a Methodist church. Methodists don't talk about the Holy Spirit. That's fine. But if you want to live a transformed life, if you want to live a life of power, a life of faith, a life that fully understands the love and depth of Jesus' love in your life, then you got to pray for it. You got to ask for it. You got to want it. It's like everything else in your life that you ever wanted in your life, you have to work for it. But when you come 10, the Holy Spirit comes 90. When you faithfully seek God, God will faithfully come to you. That's faith, believing that God is going to do what God said God is going to do. So once again, let me read this prayer from Ephesians chapter 3. Paul says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit for your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, and according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.